Hi, it's Ross here from Wizards Code. We're going to start a new tutorial series today. We're going to build a first person shooter. It's going to look something like this. This is where we'll be at at the end of the next video. At the end of this video, we will have an environment that we can run around in. We'll have our first person controller in, but we won't have any enemies or any of the effects that we're seeing here. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to install the Tyler Dungeon Sewer Kit. This comes from 3D Forge and is an excellent modular kit for building dungeons and sewers and things like that. So we're going to use that as our base environment. Next up, we're going to install Dungeon Architect. This is a procedural dungeon generator. We're going to use that initially to create a simple environment to test in, but later we'll use it to create runtime environments. So each time we play, it's different. Now, Dungeon Architect will open up this window, click on the theme templates, and if you scroll down past all these amazing themes that you can use, you will find one for the Tyler Dungeon Sewer Kit. Click that, then click the View Online, and that'll open your browser up here. You click on this little download link here, which confusingly takes you to the top of the same page, and then you can click on the download link at the top and save that file takes a few moments to download. Once you have it, it's a zip file, so unzip the file and then drag the demo folder into your project. Now you're going to notice some errors in your console here and these are going to be because you don't have the Village Exteriors kit. It's easy to fix. Just go over and delete the theme that uses the Village Exteriors kit and then you're good to go. Now go and find the Tad Sewers demo open that up, find the scene and open that. Now we're going to be making some edits to this scene and so on. So it's a good idea to create our own folder for our content. So we're going to create a folder called underscore sewer zombies. And then inside of there, we'll create a folder for our scenes. And within there, one more for our dev scenes. Okay, now we've got that, let's save this scene into our dev scene folder. This is so we can make changes to the scene and not worry about it being overwritten should we re-import the Neo FPS asset at a later time. Click over to the scene view and you'll notice that there's nothing there. So go to the hierarchy, click dungeon grid and then click build dungeon in the inspector. There we go. And now we have a dungeon. This is going to be the same dungeon every time. It won't change between runs. We will look later on how we can make this runtime generated. But for now, we're going to stick with the same dungeon because it's great for testing. OK, we're nearly there. Let's install Neo FPS, which is a FPS controller uh, and a template. It's really modular. It's excellent. So let's go ahead and install that. Now, when it's fully installed, you'll have this screen pop up. Just click apply all required settings. This will just set up your game and it's easy to do in this one because we don't have a game to work with. Um, if you do have a game, if you're adding this into an existing system, you can do this in a manual process. And so you have full control over it. But in this case, just click apply all settings. We're good to go. Now there is one setting that this wizard doesn't set up for us and that's because not everybody will want it. Um, but we're going to go into edit and project settings. And within there we're going to go to quality, or sorry graphics. And then we're going to uncheck medium and just change it to deferred rendering and do the same in the high settings as well. Uh, we'll leave it in the low settings for forward because that's a little bit faster. Okay, last step. Let's put Neo FPS in our project. Open the hub again, tools, Neo FPS, Neo FPS hub. Have a look in this quick start section. There's loads of documentation and tools and things in here. So we're gonna go into the um, template scene, which is in the scene setup, click template, flags it in the project folder for us, brilliant stuff. Drop it in as an additive scene and close the hub. Now we're going to want to move most of this into our own scene. So let's create an empty object inside of here and we'll call it um, Neo FPS. There we go. And then just drag everything from that template scene into that folder or that object. 
delete or unload the template scene. Don't save the changes. Now you might notice there's a whole load of errors in our console here, but these are to do with light maps that uh, came along with the scenes or rather didn't come along with the scenes. So don't worry about them. Just clear the console. They're going to go away and won't come back. Now let's see if there's anything we don't want inside of this scene that's been brought in. This area here, for example, the test environment, it's got a plane in there. Let's see what else there is. Uh, there's a plane, physics, not sure what that is, a bunch of colliders, okay, and a light. Yeah, we probably don't want any of this stuff. So, should we get rid of it? Yeah, let's kill it. All right, what else have we got? Uh, global post processing, let's have a look in there. Okay, so there's a bunch of post processing that may or may not look good in our scene, we'll see. And then it's worth having a look at this object here. This is where the player is going to instantiate and be controlled. So we probably want to set that up at some point. In fact, let's uh, let's do that now. Let's find a starting place for our player. Okay, this is the object. Let's just drag it into our scene, maybe in here, looking up that place there. Okay. Okay, moment of truth. Let's hit play. All right. It's a bit bright. I think I know why that is. Let's uh, let's go back into the scene quickly. And I think if I go up here, yep, sure enough, there's a camera and a light in there. Let's get rid of that. Now there are two cameras. There's one that's used in the scene in the editor. So let's put a solid color, make it fully black there. And we also want to do the same with the player. Now we have to go to the spawner here and we'll find the character prefab uh, just here. And if we click on that, it pings it over in the project view. So we're going to make a copy of that. So let's clear, create a prefabs folder. And inside of that, there we go. Inside of that, we will create a Neo FPS folder. All right. And now we can create a duplicate of that character prefab. So let's just drag that into our prefabs folder. Oh, I haven't got it available for the Neo FPS. So let's just drop it in prefabs for now. And then I can go in there and move it into Neo FPS. Just saves me clicking around, finding it again. And I'm going to want to use that prefab in our spawner. And now that I've changed the spawner, I'm going to want to create a prefab variant out of that. So there we go. And let's rename our character to something relevant to our game. Let's see, um, Sewer Zombies Player. All right, and now we want to change the camera. So go into the prefab, find the camera, and make that a solid color that is black. Excellent, now let's hit play. That looks much better. It's not as bright, the sky's good. I think we are done for today. We have our environment, we have our first person controller, and we're ready to go. All right, so in the next one, we'll add some effects in here and we'll also add some enemies. So this is about what we'll have at the end of the next video. And we'll continue working on this for uh, some time. We'll see where we get to. Till then, well, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, leave a comment as well. What do you think? You know, what should I do with this game moving forward? Let me know. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.